Hello everybody, this is Albert with Green Tea House. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna to talk about the origins of the word tea and why some of the world calls tea, tea or derivative of tea and some call it cha. Now before we begin, if you haven't done so already, please check out past episodes, especially the Fundamentals of Tea playlist and other ones that I will put up here that are germane. So many of you maybe come from India and you've called tea chai for quite some time. And some of you have been calling tea or tea or whatever your ethnicity is. And you've used that derivation of the word. Now, why is that? Why do we have essentially two large family groups of the word tea? What's the etymology behind this, this great leaf that comes from the Camilla sinensis plant? Well, in short, and we have an episode here, 2,500 years of tea history in 10 minutes. In short, the, the reason this is, is because when the West discovered tea, and when we talk about the West, we're going to talk about the maritime discovery because certainly we've talked about with the Russian caravan, there were, there were ways that tea, whatever six categories of tea, but this is mostly going to be oolong, puer, and green, got overland to Tibet, overland to Russia, overland to Persia. And so it did get some exposure to, to especially the Near East, Middle East, before the time of exploration, but really it was the time of exploration where it kicked in. So the Portuguese were the first people that got to China and the Spice Islands, what we would call today like Indonesia, Philippines, Japan, and all these things. This is like in the late 1500s. The Spanish really never got that far north, but the Portuguese did. Of course, you think of Macau, the colony of Macau that's in southern Portugal. That was a Portuguese colony. It's been that since like 15 something. And then later on, the Portuguese really didn't capitalize as much on the tea than the Dutch. So the Dutch were the second great maritime power, and these is really in the 1600s, and they were the ones that really were able to bring tea back to, uh, to Europe, and then it became very famous. The first place it really hit big was Holland, and then from there it got famous, and then the, the English were then the, the kind of the pinnacle of the maritime uh, commodity traders later on, which we talked about before. So why are there two different names for it? Well, because as you know, China, present day China, has tons of ethnicities. It's a gigantic country. It's very large. Not everybody there is Han Chinese. There's not this monolithism that you might think that there is. There's gonna be different ethnic groups, different languages. So the southern part of China, the Cantonese part, is where you get the name Cha. And so when the Dutch and then later the English, uh, when they were trading for tea, there were only two ports that they could trade for tea. And of course, the, 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 there was a major imbalance of, of, of tea trade because the Chinese owned the secrets of the tea plant and so forth. And so it was very disproportionate. Plus, you can only have one port that you could go to. Now, later, the English found ways to kind of get around this to actually get clippings of the tea plant. We talked about this in that history episode. But down in the south, you had around uh, Guangdong, around the Canton province, the southern province. Um, down there, they called it cha, cha. We don't, they, they don't say cha, it's cha. And then up near Fujian, which is kind of off the coast near Taiwan, Fujian, of course, is one of the most famous tea producing areas over there, around the, the port of Amoy, they would call it, that dialect would call it tea, te, te, tai, like that. And so this is where you get the derivation. So, down south, they called it cha, or derivative of cha, and over off the east coast, they call it te or tai. And so th that's why we get the different names. And so when these, the tea was picked up from these different ports, depending where it went back, um, that's where you got these different names. As a whole, Europe calls it te, ta, something like that, tea, because the Dutch were bringing it back from that port where they called it te. And so from there, most of Europe calls it um, some derivation of that. But I'm going to go through a quick list of countries and what they call tea. And you can see how most of them are in these two major groups. But then you also have like some countries like, where are you calling this from? So we're just going to hit some major ones. So you look at French, right? Te. And I'm sorry for any mispronunciations. Italy, te. Polish, erbata. Welsh, te. Okay. Hungarian, tea. Java. Javanese, Indonesia, te, Malayam, te, Scots, te, Sweden, te, Czech, te, t, Galicia, over in Spain, te. So you can see the majority of these are going to be t. And then you go over to cha. Cha is mostly going to be found 
or a derivation of chai. This is going to be found in South Asia mostly. So you're looking at Assam, Bengali, most of the Indian area. Persians call it cha, Korea calls it cha, of course the Japanese make a sen cha, they call it cha, and the Portuguese will call it cha, the Chinese as a whole, the main Chinese group still calls it cha, and so forth. So you look as a, as a whole, you look Europe's going to call it tea, and then anywhere in Asia as a whole it's going to be calling it cha or some derivation of cha. So that's why we have th the two different groups. And so like the Arabs, for example, call it chai. So yeah. So you look, most of the non-European groups are going to call it something with a chai derivation, whereas most of the European groups are going to call it something from the te derivation. Guys, I hope this helps. Until next time, take care. God bless. And post in the comments.